Hey everyone, Stephanie Davis here today. Today I'm going to be sharing this card that I made using Altenew's Beautiful Day stamp set. And I'm just going to do some watercoloring so it's a pretty simple card. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp out several of these flowers onto masking paper. I'm just using Memento Tuxedo Black ink and stamping them out. And I really didn't need all these, but I didn't as usual I'm just playing so I didn't really know where I was going to go with this card so I just thought I'd have a few extras just in case so I'll save the rest for later but I wind up cutting two of these flowers and that winds up being enough so I'm going around and I'm fussy cutting these because as those of you know I did sell my scan and cut and I'm still trying to find room in my craft room to buy another one because each day that I have to fussy cut I want one more and more. <laughs> I really miss that machine. So I'm fussy cutting that out and it is going to be worth it because it makes it so much easier to get the arrangement lined up. So now I'm fussy cutting the second flower out and thank goodness I could speed this up because it seemed like it took forever. So now I'm taking the leaf branch and I'm cutting it out and I actually don't wind up using the mask but I use I kind of wind up just being able to help me visualize how I want the arrangement to be. So now I'm going to cut out my card base and I'm using the Lawn Fawn Stitch Dotted Die I believe it is but I will have everything linked below to discount shops for you guys as usual. So I'm using the mask to kind of and to kind of visualize how I think I want it and line it all up before I start stamping and I use my powder tool and some VersaFine Black Onyx ink because I am going to be heat embossing this of course because that's my that's really my go-to as a busy mom to anytime I'm going to do anything with water because it just helps me stay in the lines and I feel like since I'm still learning how to watercolor I'm kind of using it as a little bit of a cheat I think um, but it really does help so I'm using my scrubber tool and my, my, my Norwex cloth as usual and anytime I use the VersaFine ink, I always use those too. So again, I'm just I mask one of the stamped images out, and then now I'm trying to arrange how I want the rest of my card to be. And I'm going to keep stamping and using my VersaFine ink to keep um, stamping my arrangement. So I did not use the powder tool, and to be honest, I don't always use it. I try to remember. And I really don't know if it makes a difference or not, but Christina Werner and Jennifer McGuire told me to do it, so I just keep doing it most of the time. Um, so now I'm going to clean my stamp each time because since I do need to place it on my card, I want to make sure not to uh, get any ink anywhere. So I'm going to use the second mask and mask off my second flower, and then I'm going to find the place for my third flower. And this was kind of a long, tedious process. I actually think this would have been faster if I wouldn't have used my Misty. If I would have just used a normal stamp block, I think it would have, I think it would have actually went a lot faster. But I've kind of gotten just used to using my Misty all the time, and I really didn't think about it until I'm almost done with the card, sadly. So if I had this to do over, I would have just used a regular acrylic block, and I think it would have gone much faster. I may not have got everything lined up just right for the flowers, but for the like starting here, I should have just used a, an acrylic block. But it took me a while before I guess I needed coffee or something, and it took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> so it is a long, tedious process, but I think it's well worth it because the arrangement just is so pretty. So this is the first time that I've used this stamp set, and. Um, I had a hard time getting it, was always out of stock, and now I wish I would have got it so much earlier. So I'm heat embossing this, and now I've I pulled out my bone folder because I've learned that that helps hold down those masking sheets. A lot of times when you add the heat gun, I find that the masking sheets want to release from there. So I wind up holding it down with my um, bone folder. And that bone folder is the one that I picked up from Simon Says Stamp. And... I don't think it's life-changing enough to order it by itself, but it definitely is handy. So with Stampin' and with Stamp Timber coming up, you might want to pick that up if you don't have one already. When you if you place an order with Stamp Timber, 
So I just keep going along and alternating, stamping them and putting clear embossing powder and using my heat tool. I try to not wait too long before I do that because I don't know, I don't want to mess it up on accident by accidentally um, dropping it or <laughs> I can be a little clumsy sometimes. So I just keep moving my mask and then that gives me a good idea of where I can put the leaf branch. And I'm kind of using the magnets to hold down my stamp paper because after a while it loses a little bit of stickiness. But I just keep adding and going along. And then every few flowers or leaves I will use my heat gun. But I, let, I wanted to just keep building and this is the last leaf I'm going to do. And then I'll start using some of the, I guess they're berries. I'm not really sure, but there's so many different beautiful images on the stamp set. Um, you can just make something really pretty. So again, I'm using my bone folder, and this is the Teflon bone folder. So that's why I think it um, holds up to the heat well. And this is when I finally, well, no, not yet. I'm almost to the point where I realize, hey, I don't have to use my Misty every time. <laughs> I can just um, actually stamp this out. So I'm turning my VersaMat over because it does give me a really good image and kind of foamy, has a foamy cushion side to it. Um, just like the foam that's in the Misty. So I'm just going around and I'm looking for where I want to add a few more little berries or different little accent pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss those and it starts going much quicker without the Misty. So I really should have done that. So I've got to add just a few more with this little leaves accent piece, I guess is what it is. They kind of look like little hearts though, so they're really pretty. And I just keep moving my masking paper, and I love masking paper for this reason because it just makes it so easy to add whatever you'd like without um, getting any other extra ink on your flower. So now I've added all of it, and I can just use the clear embossing powder one last time. It went much faster, and then I can use my heat gun one last time and then put everything else away. So I'm using my bone folder again to hold the cardstock down. I'm not worried about the na masking paper anymore because I'm finished. And then now I'm going to tape this down to my board. And I don't really know if I needed to, but um, I think it's a pretty good idea because I'm using Nina Desert Storm cardstock. It's only 80 pound cardstock, and it actually held up really. It holds up really good, I think, to watercolors. You just can't use a lot of water. You want to use just a little bit of water. So I went ahead and taped that down to my board and then and then I'm using that color swatch chart that I made to use as a color reference. So I'm using some of the red violet first for this first flower and since I don't really know how to watercolor I'm just playing. I'm actually thinking of I'm using these like I would color with Copics. I'm going in and I'm coloring in all the shadows first. Now my plan for this card was to make the colors variate and have some spots where I have a lot of pigment and then have some spots where there's no pigment and then some where I used very thinned out paint. So that's pretty much what I did. I thinned it out and then I thought that might give me some highlights and lowlights I was looking for. So for this, these paints are a little opaque so you don't really need to be heavy handed with them if you want to have this look. You can actually go in very light and you still see a lot of shimmer and it's really pretty. So, but I really liked the different spots of color and I thought it turned out really pretty. But I do wind up going back and lifting a lot of that. 
So now I'm using this color. It looks orange on screen and in the card it looks pretty orange also. But the name of the color is actually red brown. And I will have these paints listed below. I picked them up on, on Amazon and I love them. I love all the fine text, but this is the first time I'd used this set, I believe. So I really had a lot of fun. But these colors, if you haven't used any fine text yet, they really are very pretty. But especially on colored cardstock, they really just, they're really beautiful on colored cardstock. So again, I'm using a little bit, I'm kind of being a little heavy handed. I really didn't need that much paint. And especially around the stamen, you really don't want to use that, your paint that thick because it kind of covered up the embossing a little bit and I have to go back and paint over it. So I should have used a, I should have used, um, I should have watered out the paint just a little bit more especially in the center but I was trying to get deep shadows and so I was a little heavy-handed so now I'm going in and I'm using the bronze color which looks kind of like a old gold I guess I could say but it's a really pretty color and I just I was thinking of fall and when I was making this card I was thinking of fall coming and I was actually thinking that I would like to make this card and give it to my son's teacher on her first day of school with and I usually try to give uh, teachers a, like a $25 gift card from Target or something uh, to kind of start the year off and maybe make their day a little better and I figure there's probably a lot of kids that can't bring all their Kleenex and all that stuff so I figure maybe that'll help them so that's what I was thinking of and that's what inspired my card is just thinking of upcoming fall and so I was trying to kind of use fall colors. So I went around and painted all the leaves using blue green which is one of my favorite colors from this set. It's really pretty and now I'm going on top of that with some green pearl. And I just kind of alternating painting with the shadows and then trying to leave some spots open and then trying to go in and have very light color different places. So for these little berries I originally was coloring I originally was painting them with fine gold I believe which is a light yellow shade but I really didn't really like how it looks so I go back and I wind up painting all those over with gold later. And then I also am taking in some fine lilac which looked really pretty on the cardstock, but it didn't go with this card. So I wind up painting over that. But that's what's great about watercolors. If you don't like it, you can go back and fix it. So I wind up going back and I'm taking a damp paintbrush to remove some of the color. And then I go back and paint it with a blue green and it looks much prettier. So, and in a little while you'll see I drop, somehow I drop some black ink right on it. And I thought I ruined the whole card but I just took water and I, I just take my paintbrush, I dip it in the clean water, I rub it on the towel so it's just damp and I basically just lift all that paint right up. So that's what I really like about watercolors, that and they're just really, really fast. So if you're a busy mom, I highly recommend you dry any kind of watercolors. It doesn't have to be fine text, any kind of watercolor. Okay. So I got a little more black. I was trying to add some shading in that first red flower and I didn't like how it looks so that's I'm removing most of that color. And then I'm going over it with a little more of that red violet just because I really didn't want it so black in the inside. So I'm adding some, trying to add a little more shadows and then now I'm taking it pretty wet and removing a lot of that paint. I just wanted to give more highlights. So I'm lifting a lot of that color out because I was just a little heavy handed at the beginning and haven't played with these paints on this color cardstock very much yet. This might have actually been my first time. <laughs> so uh, many times you guys are going to see me making cards and it's the first time I've done it. But I just think it's fun to experiment and try new things. So I'm going in with my Ganzai Tambi watercolors and I'm just using the black. And these paints pair perfectly with the fine text because they're a little glossy. And so I thought it were, looked really good in the middle to paint right over the stamped images. 
And now, and I'm just using a number six brush. I probably could have picked a a smaller size brush to, to paint all these, but this has such a pointed end, I find myself using it almost all the time for big images and for small images. So I think it's a very good multi-purpose brush. So I'm just going in and adding a bit more detail here and there. And kind of doubling up on some of the images where I wanted them to have a little more color. So now I'm using my mask and I was thinking of taking the black paint and making some splatters but then I decided it would mess it up and then I dropped one anyway so there I am removing all the paint and once I complete the card you cannot even tell that I ever had a big black oopsie right there so I'm gonna start removing the tape and then that's when I look at the card well enough to know that I don't really like that fine the light yellow color I try to add some white highlights and then I realize I don't like that either so I go back and change that. So I probably could have edited that part out but I kind of like to leave all my, my mistakes in the card because I figured we're all learning so um, if you see my mistakes then maybe that will help you. So I go back in and paint and just remove the white and then I'm going to take this gold color from the other, the gold fine tech set. And I'm using, I think I'm using Inca Gold this time. But I will have all of the supplies linked below for you guys. So now I'm taking some vellum and I'm going to stamp out my sentiment. And I think I actually used the just one stamp set today which is very rare for me but I went ahead and stamped out the sentiment with VersaFine Pigment Ink and then I'm coating it with clear embossing powder and I'm gonna use my heat gun to emboss that I'm just cleaning my stamp really quick I don't like that VersaFine it stains it pretty good so I don't like to leave it on too long. So I'm using my bone folder again that's Teflon so it holds the it holds up with the heat gun really well and holds my paper down and now I'm going to take these everyday banner sentiment dies from Lawn Fawn and I'm going to go ahead and run that to, through my die cutting machine so then I'll have a pretty tag to put on my card. So now I had a little bit of a ridge I didn't like so I'm using my nail buffer to, to even that up. And now I'm just going to use my little Xyron machine. It's a little mini one. I haven't used it forever. But I really haven't found a good um, adhesive for vellum so I just tend to use that. So I'm putting, on this, I'm putting this on a black card base. And I'm trying to figure out if I want it on the top or the bottom and how I want to orient my card. But I wind up orienting it with the orange flower at the bottom. And then now I'm going to put my sentiment down at the bottom as well. And I have a little overhang and I'm just going to take scissors to cut that out and make it even. So I have to cut it twice to get it perfectly straight. But then I think it turned out really pretty. So this was a pretty quick and simple card. It had a lot of masking and stamping, but other than that it was pretty quick and simple. So thank you so much for joining me and that completes the card today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.